Hey, King Worldwide friends, family. It's Lisa. Welcome to King Worldwide. All right, I'm going to be turning a little bit, but I wanted to get started. See how everyone's doing on their commitment. It has been the most wonderful thing, the wonderful life. And that is because we are making our Father God first. We're making Jesus first. We're making Him and His plans first. Today's message is to just see how the commitment's going, going strong. If you want to get started now, great. May I suggest you start with seven days. Mark your calendar if you have not been doing this, putting God first, making time for Him, the first priority, whatever amount of time that you can reasonably do. If it's one minute, don't be ashamed. Set the timer and do it. Once you do one minute for seven days, increase it to two, to three, to five. It's better to be um, conservative and keep your word than do a stretch goal and never do it. With the Lord, it's consistency is where the power is. And honestly, the same thing with relationships. The more consistent we are, with people, spending time with them, the more we get to know them in all seasons, especially in terms of a spouse or, um, you know, someone you're going to spend the rest of your life with, so in a marriage, etc. So you would spend consistent time, right? Um, so that was the first thing, that it's going strong. And then the second thing was to give an example to help someone if they don't really know where to start, if they are opening their Bible and they set their timer and they sit there and it's just like, okay, this is lovely. And they're not getting revelation knowledge and they've accepted Jesus. Your heart is right. You're filled with the Holy Spirit and you're just reading. Normally, that is because there is too much of the soulish realm leading the mind, will, emotions, and senses. And that's how, that's what happened with the fall of Adam and Eve. They had been leading by the Spirit of God. And then when the fall, when they chose to make Satan obey Satan or, you know, question God, question their identity, then that resulted in spiritual death where their flesh was leading and Satan was the overlord. So now we have accepted Jesus. Jesus is our overlord, our God, our Lord, our Savior, our King. And then our mind, will, emotions in the soulish realm must line up by the renewing of the mind to the word of God. Hebrews 4.12. Thanks for your patience with this. Um, glory to God. All cars, trucks, vans, buses move in Jesus' name. And as a reminder, I've already said this prayer, but I'll say that for those of you who get in the car every day. This is what the Lord taught us. And also, um, my dad and mom perfected it. And it is, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon this vehicle every part of it, every person in it, every object and person around it, protection from every evil spirit, every evil person, every evil thing in the name of Jesus. And um, we've been saying that and we mean it and it's the blood of Jesus. So you can stop the video and replay it and things like that if you want to write it down. Okay, glory to God. Now, the other thing I wanted to say, like I said, is give you an example of something that you can do. And so when I started this, the Lord told me to pull out the um, pursuit of his presence devotional. I use that a lot. I've been using it many, many, many years. There is a faith to faith devotional that's very good. And there's also the pursuit of his presence. I personally believe the pursuit of his presence by um, KCM.org is a little more advanced. And it, to me, it's more stretching and it's applicable for every day. It doesn't matter what you do, but this, I'm just giving you an example if you want to have a system uh, for every day. So I read that devotional. Today's was so good. It's talking about keeping God first and it's, it's always like that. So, and then I'll follow the Holy Spirit's leading and prompting from either the scriptures there, and then the Holy Spirit will just guide me. And then after that, the Lord told me to pull back out the mirror translation and start back in John. And the reason why, the mirror translation was the first translation and only 
that helped me see who I am in Christ Jesus. Now remember, I did read the mirror verse by verse, King James Amplified Mirror. And I literally, it's, mirror is just, um, actually, it's New Testament. It's at the same time, I've read it over and over. And I learned who I was in Christ and learned that it's not about performance. It's about accepting who we are in Christ. And when we know who we are in terms of royalty, then we walk, talk, think a little differently. Okay. So a few points, um, I started that back, you know, 21 days ago, but there was a few points in John five that I'm going to read just to give you an idea of why the Lord, these are the type of words that I read and what the Lord wanted me to um, share with y'all today. One of the things in the notes was in um, John 5, 14, and it's about the pool of Bethesda and the different type of things there and the story about the man who for 38 years had that infirmity and he was always waiting for the angel to come and for the pool to... to for him to get into the water and get healed, right? Okay, well, when Jesus came around, Jesus said, would you like to be made whole? Would you like to be well? And I'm not going to read it right now because you can see that I'm getting in the right lane to just go straight. And again, I have two hands on the wheel. I'm holding down here. So I'm not even thinking about the video. To be honest with you, this just comes out of my heart all the time. So it's full of Bethesda. But the point is, in 514... Jesus found the man in the synagogue and said, so after he had already healed him, and he said, see, you've become whole. And then the point is he said, do not continue in that old distorted mindset. And then nothing worse can happen to you. So when Jesus healed him, saw him in the synagogue, said, see, you're whole. He's confirming that he's whole, not just healed, but he's completely whole in every area of life. And then he says, don't continue in that old way of thinking. So it's the same message for all of us. We could get healed. We can experience prosperity, generosity, um, finances, financial increase. At the same time, if we go back to thinking and doing like the way of the world with the senses leading or experience ruling or reasoning, then we're going to get messed up again because that's how the world does things and it's really Satan's God of the world system. In the notes it also says, see your wholeness, not the distortedness, problems or circumstances. So it's not denying problems or circumstances. It's saying make a quality decision with your will, which is our soulish realm, to see what God says about us. And it is a decision. It's a decision every minute of every day. It's a decision of every thought. If a thought comes that cuts you down or says you're, you're not valuable or you're not anything like you used to be or you're nothing or whatever, it doesn't matter. If it doesn't line up with what God says about you, it's not from God and it's not to be kept. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, cast out every thought and imagination bring it to the obedience of Christ. And that's what we do, period. We don't dilly-dally around with it. We don't, you know, check and see, oh, is this me? Is this the devil? Let me tell you, anything that's cutting us down, making us feel a certain way, negative, is not from God. It's from the devil, and he's trying to get us to think that way habitually and just refuse it and then find what God says about you and it's about reprogramming like we have to reprogram our mind like a computer we have to reprogram the computer same difference all right to see ourselves the way God sees us is only is the only way to escape the distortion of contradiction these are notes so do not belong to royalty circumstances and problems they don't belong to children of God so why are we having them? Why are we allowing them to stay? It just all determines on our amount of time we spend with the Lord, with him and his word and in the spirit and separate from the world. Okay, let's see. The last three points. We're supposed to see, this is in the notes, see of the mirror. See the blueprint of our design by getting to know our father. Also, 
we're separate from the world by being in harmony with God's original plan. And we're lining up to God in his ways by being awareness of our likeness in him. We always talk about that. Genesis 25, I mean 26, 27, 28. We're made in God's image and his likeness. So let me encourage you. It doesn't matter what you read, how you do it, what Bibles you use. It's the same thing as you don't hear people giving you advice on how to date your spouse. Well, you could, but or the best way to woo your spouse. Um, it, it comes instinctual. It's it's if you love someone, you want to be with them. It's the same with the Lord. And if you don't feel like you have that love for the Lord yet, it's because you haven't gotten to know him. And so that's the step of faith that we do to get to know him. That's why we I make a commitment first thing in the morning because it's really, I want to get to know him. I want to feel his sense, his presence in my life. And so what better way to do it is make a commitment. And then, I mean, I love being in the word. I would like to be in the word 24 hours a day. I know some people don't understand that. They're like, how could you want to do that? Well, I just have done it a lot. And the word illuminates me. Revelation knowledge is so exciting. You could be reading the same scripture for 25 years. And then another revelation or another facet of the word of God comes out. And it's just enlightening. That if we're not receiving revelation every time we open the Bible, then we don't have a very strong relationship with the Lord. It's not an intellectual um undertaking. It's not in the intellect at all. I don't use my, my, it goes through my mind, I suppose, how to use, to learn and read, but I'm not learning from the intellect. I'm reading by the spirit. I don't want to, I personally am not needing to know stories unless it's a story that pertains to how to implement in my life today. It's more about getting to know the heart of the father and the Holy Spirit. One last thing. Um, According to some preachers that we stay close with, things might be changing in the next couple of months. I'm telling you that because it also the word says, in the last days, many will fall away from the faith. And you might say, well, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Okay, well, let me tell you what's coming up. And so that you see if you're, what you're going to do. There's going to be lots of signs and wonders. And they're not going to be from the Lord Jesus Christ. They're from the Antichrist spirit. And many will think it's the Lord because they will say, this is a sign and wonder. I'm going to warn you that things with UFOs or things that have other things that might be high tech, I'm not denying it, but it's not the Lord. And the way you'll know is you won't have a peace about it. There might be fear. Just stay in the word. Stay in the word. Stay focused on the Lord Jesus Christ and your commitment to him. Because that's what the word says that the liar will try to do. Deceive and, and get people off knowing who they are. And off their um, true belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And many will turn away. I'm not speaking it, but it will happen. And so the best thing to do is keep your eyes and ears on the word not on the news, not on the social. And this would be one of those times where it does not matter what's going on in the world. I repeat, it does not matter. I don't care if you're in finance. I don't care if you're in an industry that you have to know what's going on. Listen, the Holy Spirit can tell you everything. You do not want to be distracted and you do not want to be pulled. And this is a warning. And I'm telling you, I don't give these warnings often, but please be aware that the liar is sneaky and he never poses as a liar. It's always, he always poses as an angel of light or disguises as something cool or neat or different or entertaining or magnificent. And it's a lie. So that's that. That's my word of warning. I love you all. Stay in the word and pray in the spirit and you'll know in your heart the truth. Okay. See you. Bye.